Welcome to Civil Engineering Fanatics. In this video, we'll dive into the fascinating world of Fiber Reinforced Concrete, or FRC, and its role in the construction industry. So, what exactly is Fiber Reinforced Concrete? It's a type of concrete reinforced with short, discrete fibers, like this, that are uniformly distributed and randomly oriented. You can see fibers in fresh concrete. These fibers significantly enhance the structural integrity of the concrete. Traditionally, concrete relied on steel reinforcement bars, or rebar, to improve its tensile strength, which we know as steel-reinforced concrete. But in certain applications, we now use fibers instead of steel reinforcement. Why is that? The shift to fibers is primarily driven by their ability to address specific challenges in construction. Fibers help reduce cracking caused by shrinkage and improve the overall durability of concrete. We can discuss how fibers prevent shrinkage in concrete in more detail. Fibers help distribute stress more uniformly throughout the material, minimizing weak points. Additionally, fibers are often easier to incorporate into the concrete mix, eliminating the need for complex steel bar placement. Fibers used in FRC can include steel, glass, synthetic, or even natural materials. Each type of fiber brings unique properties to the concrete, such as improved toughness, crack resistance, or flexibility. Moreover, fibers can be tailored to suit different applications. For example, steel fibers add toughness to heavy-duty floors, while synthetic or natural fibers provide cost-effective solutions for crack control in pavements and walls. This versatility makes fiber-reinforced concrete an innovative choice for modern construction needs. Let's explore its features in detail. In order to apply FRC in various construction, you need to know how FRC works, that is, how fibers work in concrete compared to conventional steel reinforcement bars. Let's start with the basics, plain concrete. Concrete on its own is a brittle material, which means it's not very strong when stretched or bent and can crack easily. To address this, we traditionally add steel reinforcement bars or rebar, to increase its strength and allow it to carry heavier loads. Now, you might be wondering, if steel reinforcement works so well, why do we use fibers in concrete? Great question! Fibers aren't actually meant to make the concrete stronger in the same way steel bars do. Their primary role is to control cracking. Cracking can happen in concrete for a variety of reasons, but two common types are plastic shrinkage and drying shrinkage. Plastic shrinkage occurs during the early stages when the concrete is still setting, while drying shrinkage happens later as the concrete fully cures. Fibers help manage these cracks by holding the concrete together and preventing them from spreading. It's important to note that this doesn't mean fibers stop cracks from forming entirely. Cracks may still appear, but the fibers keep them from getting larger. Think of it like this. When concrete starts to crack, which is normal over time, fibers step in to hold those cracks in check and change how the material behaves under stress. This makes the concrete more durable and able to perform better, especially in situations where cracks would normally weaken it. Additionally, fibers reduce the permeability of concrete, meaning they help minimize water bleeding. Some fibers even enhance the impact abrasion, and shatter resistance of concrete, making it more resilient in high-stress environments. So, can fibers replace steel bars? Not quite. Unlike steel bars, which are long and placed in specific patterns, fibers are tiny, discontinuous, and randomly distributed throughout the concrete mix. This makes them different from traditional reinforcement. Steel bars are ideal for increasing the load-bearing capacity of concrete, while fibers excel at crack control. In many projects, we use fibers on their own, and in others, we combine them with steel reinforcement to get the best of both worlds. For example, larger steel or synthetic fibers can sometimes replace rebar entirely in specific cases, such as in tunnel segments or underground construction. In fact, fiber-reinforced concrete has almost completely replaced steel-reinforced concrete in tunnel linings. Because fibers don't corrode like steel does, especially in moist or water-prone environments. Corrosion is a major concern in traditional steel reinforcement, as seen in catastrophic failures like the Surfside building collapse. 
That said, not all fibers are perfect for every application. Some natural fibers, like lignocellulosic ones, can degrade in a cement matrix due to chemical reactions like hydrolysis. Additionally, certain fibers may even reduce the compressive strength of concrete. So, to sum it up, fibers and steel reinforcement aren't competitors, they're teammates. Each has a unique role in enhancing concrete's performance. This brings us to the various types of fibers used in Fiber Reinforced Concrete, FRC. Each type of fiber has unique characteristics and is used for specific purposes in concrete applications. Let's go through them one by one. 1. Cellulose fibers. These are made from processed wood pulp products and are mainly used for controlling and reducing plastic shrinkage cracking. They're applied in a similar way as microsynthetic fibers, providing great crack resistance during the early stages of concrete curing. 2. Glass fibers. Glass fiber reinforced concrete, GFRC, is quite popular in architectural applications and for cement based panel structures. It's ideal for creating lightweight, durable, and aesthetically pleasing surfaces. 3. Macrosynthetic fibers. This newer class of fibers is an excellent alternative to steel fibers when dosed correctly. These fibers, often made from polypropylene or other polymer blends, mimic the physical characteristics of steel fibers. They are typically used in larger amounts, ranging from 3 to 20 pounds per cubic yard, 1.8 to 12 kilograms per cubic meter. 4. Microsynthetic fibers these fibers are designed to control plastic shrinkage cracking and are made from synthetic materials like polypropylene, polyethylene, polyester, nylon, carbon, aramid, and acrylics. They're used in smaller amounts, usually 0.5 to 3 pounds per cubic yard, 0.3 to 0.9 kilograms per cubic meter, and are great for early stage crack mitigation. 5. Natural fibers. Natural fibers include materials like coconut, sisal, jute, and sugarcane. These fibers are commonly used in non-commercial applications around the world. They come in various lengths, shapes, and material properties, making them versatile for specific uses. 6. Polyvinyl alcohol, PVA, fibers. These synthetic fibers can significantly improve the flexural and compressive strength of concrete, especially when used in higher amounts. They're a great choice for projects that need enhanced performance. 7. Steel Fibers Steel fibers are some of the most commonly used for improving concrete's toughness and post-crack load-carrying capacity. They're typically made from carbon or stainless steel and come in various shapes, like crimped, hooked end, or mechanically deformed for better anchorage in the concrete. According to ACI 544, Steel fibers are classified as types I through V and range in size from 1.5 to 3 inches, 30 to 80 millimeters. They can be dosed at rates of 10 to 100 pounds per cubic yard, 6 to 67 kilograms per cubic meter. Each of these fibers serves a specific purpose, whether it's controlling cracks, improving toughness, or enhancing overall durability. Selecting the right fiber depends on the type of project and the performance you're looking to achieve. To wrap up, fiber reinforced concrete is a powerful solution for improving the strength, durability, and flexibility of traditional concrete. By adding fibers like steel, glass, synthetic, or natural materials, we can reduce cracks, enhance load bearing capacity, and extend the lifespan of structures. Thank you for watching, and remember strong structures start with innovative materials.